Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone from whichever part of the world you are attending today's session. Uh, welcome everyone to the Women in Africa webinar series. We are a part of IDEA committee, which is focused on to inspire, develop, empower, and advance all GRSS members and affiliated societies who are interested in the fields of geoscience and remote sensing. Women in Africa webinar series is focused on promoting individual women's research and guidance to students and young professionals in the African region. We also had a previous session webinar on family and career life for geospatial folks by Nancy Order from Germany. And today's session, we have Dr. Maria from Italy, who is going to speak on the topic fall army warm monitoring and early warning systems and if the participants have any question answers you can always type in the chat in the question answers window and the question answers will be addressed at the end of the session over to you dr maria and kasim yeah thank you so much uh, we are very happy to introduce our distinguished webinar speaker dr maria luisa whose very impressive journey through the world of remote sensing in agriculture is very, uh, very remarkable. She is originally from Argentina and throughout her doctoral studies, she conducted groundbreaking research that involves a diverse range of crops, including maize, wheat, barley, soybean, and, and others. And her most impactful project unfolded in Zimbabwe, Kenya, and Tanzania, where she forged uh, various connections with small-scale farmers and gained invaluable insights into their innovative food production approaches. At the moment, Dr. Maria is, Dr. Luisa is focused on tomato and melon cultivation and using remote sensing techniques to manage water resources effectively. So right now, she stands before us as a distinguished expert who is ready to share her wealth of experiences and insights gained from her extensive work in the field of remote sensing in agriculture. And at this point, please join us in giving her a warm welcome as she guide us, guides us through this interesting world of remote sensing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dr. Maria. Hi, hello. It's, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. I'm Dr. Maria Luisa Uchayot. Um, I am working at the Consiglio Nazionale della Ricerca in Florence, Italy. Like they said, I'm working in uh, management water for the Tuscany region. But now, now I am glad to talk about a project that I did in the 2019 in different country of Africa that the name is Regional Monitoring of Farmy Warm using early warming systems. But to have an introduction about what is remote sensing, I will explain a bit what is important to have in count for follow this research. And yeah, for detection and quantification of biotics and abiotic stress on crop, there are destructive methods like biomass, stables, isotope, PCR to detect disease, but they are time consuming and costly. Also, there are no destructive methods like remote sensing on plant, taking vegetation indexes and biomass, photosynthetic parameter estimation of disease. All this has less time consuming, sometimes less costly, you can do plant phenotyping and also use like uh, precision agriculture. What is remote sensing? Plants can interact with the sunlight differently depending on the wavelength. Inside incident, solar radiation can follow three pathways, absorb, like we can see here, transmission and reflection. Um, the, re the radiation reflected by plants contain information about biophysical composition, uh, biophysical status, and can be measured using sensors at different scales. Uh, this is how the observation scales we have from ground level until to satellites. Uh, ground level, we have a stationary platform like this one, 
Phenomobile, uh, this one, pheno holds like this one, and handheld mobile phone like this. Also, and manned aerial vehicles like drones of this one that they have uh, sensors. After we have manned aerial vehicles, and the last one is satellites. For taking count, uh, remote sensing is important three resolutions spectral, spatial, and temporal. With a spectral is the wavelength width and the number of the different frequency bands from a sensor. Here we have the reflectance of a leaf plant, and we have the highest is in the infrared, the, the, the lowest is in the visible, and after in the short wave infrared, we have some. In down, we have a figure with the proximal ground and aerial sensor that can be conventional RGB cameras with visible and multi-spectral, hyperspectral sensor that cover almost all the wavelength. <clears throat> and for satellite remote sensing, we have different uh, satellite, but I want to focus in Sentinel-2 A plus B that we cover with the bands almost all the wavelength and planet scope that uh, cover the visible and the near infrared that they're more important for the plant status. Uh, following, we have the normalized different vegetation index that differ from the visible uh, red and the near infrared reflectance that is closely related to the vegetation presence of the vigor. We have the spatial resolution that is a measure of the smallest object that can be resolved by a sensor, depending on the pixel size. Here we have from the Sentinel to A plus B until the fish eye from below at the different resolution, the 10 meters, three meters, 0 0.01 meter pixel, 0 0.06 and 0 0.001 pixels. And the last resolution is temporal resolution. This is a measure of the frequency with which a sensory revisit the same area of the study. It can be fixed or flexible. Fixed is always a um, satellite, like Sentinel that is each five days. And flexible is when you can handle, when you can use this sensor. And you can planify the specific phonological state when you're gonna go to the field and take measurements. Okay, now we are going to my research that the name is Regional Monitoring of Army Worm using Early Warning System. This work was published in Remote Sensing uh, last year, and it was a collaboration with the Universitat de Barcelona, FAO, Penn State, College of Agriculture Science, Moy University, and CIMIT. A background of this project is uh, the invasion of expansion of Falarmi worm across the world. Uh, Falarmi worm is a worm that was is uh, from America and started to invasion Africa in 2016 that we can see in the photos and how it was spreading in the different country. The big problem with this uh, worm is that have preference in the maize and it's attacked in maize and when attacked in the rep productive stage of the maize, all the production of the maize is lost. But why, uh, if you treat the farm worm in the vegetative state could be um, good for not losing the production and recover the, the maize. The objective of this project was implement a cost-effective assessment for farm worm monitoring and early warning system, famous, on sub-Saharan maize field using different remote sensing technologies. This project was uh, divided divide into uh, a specific objectives. The first one was development of a satellite image-based monitoring algorithm through Google Earth Engine for Sentinel-2, A plus B, and FAMOS uh, mobile application data. This was a proof of concept that we use the data from field maize from Kenya with infestation of farm worm from the FAO app. After we developed a Google Engine cloud-based algorithm using Sentinel A plus 
a, to a plus b data and we calculate NTVI using Sentinel. And after we did NTVI time series per May season. Once we have the time series, we do the first derivative of the time series because we was looking for uh, this vegetative derivative NTVI to see four different um, things. We have in the one, the crop growth, is this part break two break point the flower mewar infestation at vegetative stage is one three is a negative value from the first derivative that is the break point also there and after the recovering after a treatment and we have this using in a this is an example for one field of mayfield in kenya that we have all we have um, the growth season, the break point, and the recovery. That is not that much, but it's going up. And uh, to see if this break point for the, was for the farm worm infestation, we did a correlation with the derivative NDVI, the lowest, when is the break point, against the level of infestation of farm worm in different um, fields, may field. And we have a Pearson correlation of 0.90%. Having this result, we pass to the second objective that was doing a time series anomaly change detection and first derivative growth pattern analysis of the NDVI using Sentinel-2 and planet scope image. And this project was in three countries, in Zimbabwe, Kenya, and Tanzania. And we went to eight field, eight maize fields at vegetative stage at Zimbabwe, 12 in Tanzania, and 19 in Kenya. This is how was our plan campaign that in Zimbabwe and Kenya are a different uh, season of the maize. Zimbabwe is from November to June. In Tanzania have in Kenya uh, have two, but we use the March and October season. And we do, uh, we take the data from Sentinel Planet Scope from the whole season, but also we went once, one time to take data from a drone, but this data was not good. That's why we use a phenopole of five meters to see, uh, to simulate um, drones. And also we use fish eye from below to take a leaf area index. For, for manually processed satellite data, we use Sentinel-2 plus V with 13 band that I show at the first, and we calculate the NDVI to see how was the biomass. Here we can see the, the, the pixel of 10 meters, and when it's dark green is because the, it's higher the biomass than this part is a liar, a light green. And here we use the plant scope. There is a commercial nanosatellite with four bands and we calculate also the NDVI. And here we can see with more detail how was the NDVI. In this part that is light green is like this part, but here we can see darker than here. And is with three meters of resolution. For the multispectral uh, data from a drone, we cannot use because in some places it's not allowed to use drone in some countries. And that's why we use a phenopole of five meters from the ground. And we use a multispectral camera with four bands and also we calculate the NDVI. And we use also an affordable camera, RGB, and we calculate green area. The, the green area is the percentage of a green pixel that have the photos. And this is an example, how is the phenopole at five meters. And for the last thing, we use a mobile with a fish eye lens uh, where we obtain the leaf eye index from a, a can eye that we can see is from below. Okay, we go to the results. The first thing that we do is a uh, Comparison of the NDVI green area in index at different spatial resolution. 
And we can see that the Pearson correlation shown a strong correlation between low spatial resolution from planet scope, again, high spatial resolution from sensor using biomass index like NTVI, a leaf area index, and a green area. And here we have Sentinel-2 and planet scope NTVI time series analysis that we do manually. And the, the dark green is the NTVI curve. The light green is the first derivative. And the line in red was the represented data that we was in the field. Here we can see that a Sentinel-2 time series is missing three days of data to it do the two clouds. And here we do a zoom out and we can see that the breakpoint that we was waiting and after the recovery was the day that we was in the field taking data. And this the result can suggest that we use uh, the the trickies in the NDBI could be because the cause of cause of farming worm because we was there and we can be sure that it was not raining and not another disease, anything. And for a conclusion, we have that for a suggestion that how could be this regional monitoring warming uh, could be that in different province of the country use a Google engine um, cloud-based algorithm to calculate NTVI time series anomaly. And when they see a anomaly, go to the field and check if the problem is because you have a fall army worm, or also could be a warning for another abiotic on biotic stress. And this is what I did. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Maria. It was uh, really insightful and especially talking about maize and I love maize so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any Q&A? Sunny, would you like to take up? Yeah, not me. Uh, thank you, Maria. Uh, all the participants, if you have some question answers, you can type in the Q&A window or also in the chat window. But we have one question for now. Like Mary is asking, what is the implication of this Pearson correlation of 0 0.09? Uh, it's 0 0.9, no? I'm thinking that you are talking about the first object that we use. We did, uh, okay, wait, can I share again? Yeah, yeah, sure. Pearson correlation of 0 0.09. That's the yeah, but... There is not a correlation of 0 0.09. It's 0 0.9. This one, no? I think maybe. Yes, yeah. that's the one I'm talking of. Yeah. I saw it as 0 0.09. This, this was the correlation that we used to, was the proof of concept was worth it to go to the field and check if this proof of concept of all can use. And is the relation between the level of infestation that we have in the each field and the minimum derivative NDVI that we have in the same field. And we want to see if they have a correlation. It was a high. And that's why we can say that there is a correlation between the level of infestation of army worm and the minimum derivative NDVI. Uh, thank you, Maria. We can wait for one or two minutes for the question and answers. Uh, Jonas is asking, can you please share the PPT via email? Uh, Jonas and all the participants, the recording of the session will be presented in the I IEEE GRSS YouTube channel. So you can stay tuned. Sorry, I don't understand what you say. Uh, participants were asking about the PPT to be shared to their email ID. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I can share, but you have a paper that I published that I talk about everything of this that I have the same result if you want. Okay. 
Okay, Maria. From the results, I have another question. Yeah, yeah, of course. From the results, uh, I can see uh, when you are on the field, uh, because of cloud or whatever, the uh, I I didn't understand that part, and that's why I want us to go back there. Okay. That the the part of when you were in the field and what cost what the clouds cost the thing. Uh, Ah, okay, I can share yeah. this part, no? Yes, yes, yes. If when you do the um, Sentinel NDVI, sometime you know that there is cloud, and that's why here you can see that is a perfect curve that they yeah. don't have a problem. And when you do planet scope that is lower in the side that satellite Sentinel 2, it's yeah. not to have clouds. And that day we have a break point in the NDVI was a down and after was recovering. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. You, and because your conclusion was either that was because of the clouds or because of the fry, fry uh, army worm, right? Because of the clouds, we cannot, it's difficult to use Sentinel-2 and also because in Kenya and Tanzania, it's all the time with clouds. And it's really yeah. difficult to do this anomaly. That's why it's better go with planet scope. But the problem with planet scope that is pay under payment. Okay, okay. Well, okay. That's very clear now. Okay, thank you. Mosmi, we do not have any further Last questions. Last question. Yeah. Yeah, Mary, Mary. please go ahead. Yeah, we 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 have been you have talked you have talked about fry army worms and how it is affecting agriculture. Are there some other things that, what in the course of your research you discovered which are also affecting, not related to the worms you're talking about? Yeah, of course, low nitrogen can affect to the biomass that we can see a field that we saw a field that was under low nitrogen, uh, not raining, like in Zimbabwe, the weather is different than in in Kenya and Tanzania, sometimes they don't have, uh, they don't, don't rain and also can affect this. Also in Kenya after, that we did this project, we cannot do again because it was the locust infection and the, the locust do the same like for army worm in the maize, eat the biomass. That was also the next question I was to ask because I know that we have locust in Africa that yeah. affects, so you know, the, those fry army, army worms that are coming to Africa because that was, as, as you said, was discovered since 2016. Yeah, it was 2019, and we want to do 2021, 2022, and 2020. But the problem was a pandemic. Pandemia is coming, coming, and also because the locus was at the same time, and we cannot yeah. do. We do all this. How then will you differentiate in the field if this crop is being affected by locust or by fry army? I I don't think so that we can see the difference. That's mm. why I'm saying like a solution is do the uh, time series anomaly. And when you see anomaly, go to the field, but have something that uh, is controlled, but remote and saying when you go, when you see anomaly there, go to the field and it's a better yeah. thing to understand. But I also, I know that it's complicated to have this kind of remote and regional in different countries. Because in some countries, yes, you meet locusts. In some other countries, we don't have locusts, but we also have another kind of and another kind of worms that affect plants. We even have uh, maybe insects that affect plants more than the worms themselves. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's a proposition. Maybe we can look for other ways of which uh, we can analyze the crops without 
because if Sentinel is not giving us exact satellite or oh, exact uh, image of what what we can get on the on ground, then we could buy and <laughs> and do something better. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course okay it's thank possible. you very much Lisa for your presentation it was really I've been waiting for it for a long time for me it was one of my best profit project that I have in my PhD because I went to to the different country and see how people treat the maize and for me it was a learn because people was uh, killing the farm you weren't using ash by plant by plant yeah yeah like mm -hmm. ash from wood yeah 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 okay yeah we do that too anyway Maria, what, 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 sorry. what is done in one african country is probably done in most african countries we have our own ways that we remedy those worms because truly it affects most of our plants yes okay thank you thank you yeah maria i have a question for this data collection did you uh, take the images of uh, all this um, maize and uh, all the plants and uh, thereafter you did uh, you applied the training algorithm and the um, testing algorithm it means what kind how did you collected the data what the was data, your data the data from the first object it was a data that they have in a app the name of famous that is from farm warm that is going by FAO and Penn State College. And they collect all the field, maize field that have an army worm. And we use all these uh, locations to do a NTVI uh, time series anomaly. And can I, I ask, I respond to your question? You have, or, yeah, uh, so data, data was in the form of numericals or in the form of images, which you processed? The process is like the data from- No, oh, which you processed, the data oh. was- in the Yes, form. I process all the data from, the first one I process a Google engine that I, the, the Google engine download the data from the Sentinel and do, and we do a, uh, cloud-based algorithm to take the curse. But the second part, when I was there, I download all the data and do manually to see if everything is go well. And I download, I use QGIS to do everything. So that is what, what was the data? Means uh, images was the, you know, were the data or the numericals, uh, numeric uh, were the figures were the data? No. What was the data? Images. Images, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I oh. think, uh, Sunny, we have one more question. Yeah, there is a, one question. Is the best or minimum resolution to us the relationship and DVI? Um, this question is, um, it was the only data that we have and we need to do a correlation between the both and the derivative minimum uh, NDVI. Is like we have if we take a plant in vegetative stage and the NDVI go down is because the biomass go down and we can see the level of infestation. You're talking about the the same graph. I don't know how to respond this, but I don't know is the best or minimum resolution to assess relationship of NDVI. Mm. No, I don't know. You call you name Luisa like me. Yeah, Sunny, if we do not have any question, we can proceed with the end. Uh, thank you, Mosu. So thank you, Dr. Maria, for your wonderful session and providing insights about your valuable research. I guess we have one more question. Dr. Mary. Yeah. It's 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 not a question. Um, I I was just to remind us about the the two people we have to choose for this webinar for membership. Mumsi. 
Yeah. Uh, it doesn't concern you, Luisa. I see the way you're looking confused. Okay. Yeah, uh, Maria, it is uh, every, from every uh, webinar, we consider two uh, student uh, members who are interested to join uh, GRSs. We would like to ask them if any of the two student members who are interested to join GRSs can uh, write to can write to us. Or if any of the student member uh, attendee who is a student and willing to join GRSs, please uh, type in the chat box. Uh, so first two will be the given chances. So kindly mention your email ID. Email ID and full name. We can wait for two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, please we'll wait for two minutes. Those the students attending this webinar who want to be members of the of the Josiahans and Remote Sensing Society, please can you send us your full names? Okay, we've already gotten two people. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shafiq uh, Vaswa and uh, Bhanu Pratap uh, Andovara. Mm. Okay, then. Yeah. We will contact you shortly after the webinar. And we have one more person who has raised his hand, Rama Karim. You have some question? Rama Karim, you can unmute yourself and speak to the speaker. While Karim is coming up, I also have a question, the last question for Louisa. Ah, I have a how I... will you encourage? So sorry. First student. I wanna I wanna uh, respond to Luisa because now I understand the question. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, the best or minimum resolution to assess if you see the correlation that we did, uh, for me, you can use uh and planet scope and, and and sentinel, and you can do the level infestation also. Uh, you can see in in the graphic that I show that uh, you can use also satellite. You don't need to high resolution because you want to see how is the NDVI is going down. Okay. Now, uh, what did you ask me, Mari? Yeah, I'm asking about if a, a student wants to understand deep, like wants to do what you did in another country or wants to do what you did in the same area, but maybe different seasons. How will you encourage that student to go about it? Can you supervise a student? Or first, or first, that's my first question. Can you supervise a student? Or can you mentor a student from beginning to end in a project and let the student understand? Because I'm very sure that there are some students here who really want to understand what you did and also do it maybe their own personal. It's cut. Did you? Uh, it's cutting what you asked me, but I understand. Uh, I can I can help you to do it. Uh, I can give you my email right in here if someone wanted to have um, help in these things. Uh, and I think if I can do, everyone can do. It's not that difficult. And if someone are interested to do something similar to this, can write me and I can help you. Thank you so much, Luisa, for your time and for this great presentation. Yeah, thank you to invite me. Okay, then with that, we can end our session. Thank you, Maria. And thank you all the participants for attending the session. Thank you, nice thank you, everyone. Thank you, Maria. Thank you very much for being here and attend everyone. I'll just request everyone to turn on the pic, turn on their camera so that we can take a group pic.
Mary, Asim. <laughs> I'll just keep the GRSS logo instead of me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, Kasim, yes, thank you. Mary, we are waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I can't join the picture. Okay, okay, uh, we'll take this. One minute, one minute, one more. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Maria. Very nice uh, to have you here. And it is our pleasure to host your uh, webinar with us. Okay. Thank, thank you. you very much for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.